Hi, this is Tawana Freeman with the Black Life Coaches Network. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. I am um, presenting you with a new contributor. His name is Dr. Terry Jackson. He is one of the veterans in the business of organizational dynamics and organizational leadership. And it is with great pleasure that I introduce this gentleman with to you all. So it's always good to listen to the wisdom that comes through the voices of our veterans so that we can understand some of the key things that they did in their through their journey and their professional career that made them as successful as they are today. So welcome, Dr. Jackson. Thank you for joining us today. Dr. Freeman, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me to take part in this, and I look forward to our interview here. Well, you know, you are the founder of Weepiphany. Can you give us a little bit of background about what is Weepiphany and, and basically how long you've been established? Weepiphany is actually an executive coaching and consulting organization. What we do is we create leaders one step at a time. You know, the foundation of that all is helping others and create, excuse me, helping others improve their quality of life. And what we will do, say, with an executive, there might be an organization who has an executive who they consider to be a top-tier executive, but they may not be performing at that top level. We'll go in with, with a set of solutions uh, based upon uh, assessments that we give. We utilize assessments that uh, will measure one's thinking skills, behavioral traits, as well as their occupational interest. Based on that information and that from that assessment, we will then be able to determine how an individual actually processes information. And I like to make it clear that there's no bad or good way of processing information. It's just how they process information when they're giving. Let me give you an example. So there are some people who may have to be given information from a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. There are others who can receive information from a fire holes, but yet and still they can process it. Some people are more methodical in their processing of information. Some people can make decisions rather quickly. By utilizing this, it helps individuals communicate with other individuals. Another example is going into a boardroom where you have maybe 10 or 12 board members. They're not communicating well, but they don't understand. So we may offer to give the assessment to all of those board members will come back, we'll show each and every board member how they communicate, how they process information, which then drives an effective organization, an organization that communicates better, as well as an organization that has become more effective in moving toward increased profitability. Wow. And with all your years of experience, um, are there any particular tools that you tend to use when you do that um, assessment? Because I know that there's so many on the market now. Um, do you favor any particular tools over others? Yes. What I found is Profiles International. It's called a PXT. That's just one of the assessments in their whole suite of assessments that they have to offer. That is the Profiles XT. It's actually the what we would call the mothership of all the profiles that we use and that we use that with everyone because again we want to understand how they think how they behave and what their occupational interest may be and the occupational interest could, is very important because once you give that assessment and you interpret it you may find that that person is not in the right position for that organization mm. so profiles is the uh, assessment suite of tools that we utilize so when you are looking at establishing a business and, and wanting to take that step, what what I find is there are some things that we kind of always tell people to do. And we tell them to make sure that there's a market for what you offer. Make sure that you are um, communicating your vision um, appropriately. But outside of those basics, there's some things that you and I had discussed before, and you mentioned some things in an article that you wrote called Seven Steps to Build Your Business. And you talk about your voice, your heart, and truth. Those are just three of the seven. And if you could expand a little bit about what it means to, to have your voice and your heart and, and operate from a level of truth. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, for mentioning those, and thank you for, 
uh, being able to identify that article and see those in there. But what I would really like to start with first is the vision, because that is the key to everything. See, it's a holistic approach to starting a business, and and I'm sure you know, being that you 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 are you're a doctor, you understand systems theory and systems thinking. So everything that I do, I come from a systems theory uh, perspective, and this means of starting a business, this, these seven steps are basically a system that begins with the vision. You have to understand from your vision, defining what it is you want to do. You have to be extremely clear about that. That has to be clarified within yourself as to what service or product that you're going to offer to the, to, to the consumer. Because that service and that product that you offer and that clarity will, could, can bring you integrity. And as we both know, being business people, a great deal of profit. But in every business, you want to be able to serve because service is the ultimate goal. Absolutely. Any compensation that you receive is just a byproduct of your service. And so that vision has to be extremely clear as to what you want to do and why you want to do it. Mm-hmm. When you start talking about the voice, the voice really talks about the marketing, how you communicate with your potential clients, how you communicate with the world, how you build that brand of how you want to be seen, you know, as a business person, as a company uh, doing business globally, not just here in the in the 50 states, but globally, because we live in a global society. Technology speeds up every day and we can touch more and more people around the world. When you bring your heart into the process, you're talking about flow. Mm. And that is fanatical love overarching wisdom, Mm -hmm. that flow that you bring to your business of touching people, dealing with relationships, because no money grows on trees. Mm -hmm. We all know that people bring the money to you provided that you offer a service or a product that they see that is valuable. Mm -hmm. So you want to have your heart into it. You want to express gratitude for them giving you the opportunity to provide a product or a service that fulfills the needs that they have. Mm-hmm. And I think you mentioned truth. Yes, I did. That is, the, oh, that is the ultimate. I mean, being true to yourself, first and foremost, understanding what your strengths are, that's, what you're going to, that's where you're going to build your business. If you're a great orator, then you become a speaker. If you are a great person uh, that can build technology products, then you want to build a business where your strength is. You want to understand your weaknesses because the competition, of course, will always take the time to try to pick out your weaknesses. But you really want to understand your strengths and build your business around what your strengths are. So you want to be true to yourself and you want to be true to your fellow man. You know, Dr. Jackson, I'm going to go back to heart because, you know, you're right. As as a business owner, you need to connect with that vision and it should come from a place of passion because if you are passionate about what it is that you're doing, obviously you stand to be more successful. When you talk about the heart of, of, of being in business and knowing that you are serving at a level where you are giving and you are putting the client first, you're assessing the needs of the client first, you are presenting things with quality and you're allowing to, the provisions to follow you after you push quality. And again, it's dealing with the client or the prospective customer that makes all the difference. And so, you know, we can be extremely passionate, but if we're not a people person, what can we do? How can we um, do a better job connecting with our prospective customer or client? Because at the end of the day, I may be very introverted. What can I do to remedy, you know, um, that, that hindrance that I may have regarding connecting with people? Well, uh, again... Um, speaking of executive coaching or speaking of any coaching, when you're talking about, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to teach technical skills. It's tougher to teach people skills, but they can be done. Right. And so with that being the case, you start looking at, I'll go back to the assessments. Let me fully understand 
the thought process of this individual, how they behave, especially around others, and what their occupational interest is. As Jim Collins said, let me put the right people on the bus, in the right seats. So as I'm looking at the attitude and I'm looking at the personality of this individual and how they best interrelate with people, then you can utilize the assessment, interpret the assessment, and build a coaching program around helping that person improve their personal and per personable skills. Absolutely. You know, but yeah, and, and, and you would use that, of course, probably by initiating a 360 feedback Mm -hmm. program in which you would ask their peers, their managers, how they perform and how they act around others, and also to let them know that this you're asking these questions because you want to help them improve their personable skills so that they can become people, uh, people persons, if, if you will. And this goes into helping them improve their quality of life and their career, because one thing we know, People will always be here, and it takes people to create products and services because the greatest computer ever built was the brain. That's right. And yeah, from that, uh, you have to be a, a people person dealing with people every day. And so you want to look for compassion. And so we want to build compassion in a person. We want passion. We want understanding and, and, and gratitude to be a part of that, that, that human being. We got to understand that it's about service first. You know, no man is an island. That's right. And with that being said, um, the only thing you can really depend on is other people. Um, interdependence, I think Dr. Stephen Covey said that interdependence is the highest level of human interaction possible. Knowing that you can depend on your, your fellow human being and that your fellow human being can depend on you. So there are numerous ways we can build uh, interpersonal skills within those who have to be uh, introverted because they may be techies, as we call them, or financiers. And so because they're dealing with numbers and technology every day, they don't have the uh, interaction with people. But we need to take them to a, a higher level of performance because when you get to the executive levels, it's not about the... The, the technical skill any longer. It's about your ability to inspire others to see a vision that you've created as to where your organization wants to go. Well said, Dr. Jackson. Absolutely key and critical. Let me tell you, one of the things that, you know, as you were giving those, um, those wonderful points, one of the things that I come to realize here is that at every level, if you're in a corporation and or if you started your own pursuit of um, being an entrepreneur, the bottom line is, is that if you are an entrepreneur and you are in your solopreneur state, meaning you're the only one in that in that corporate structure and it's just you the bottom line is is that you're still the executive of that business you're still accountable at an executive level so it doesn't matter if you're answering to a corporate structure and if you're placed in some hierarchy it doesn't matter the the, the the tools or the keys still apply, whether you are in a corporate structure or on your own. The bottom line is you mentioned I need to do an assessment if there's an areas that I need to develop. I need to understand how to develop my people skills. I need to understand not only the financing um, aspect of running a business, but I also need to know the marketing. So you may be the one point person for all those critical skills. But the bottom line is that everything you mentioned in this article is applicable um, even as an executive and or the executive of a small business, it's all applicable. And so you with everything that you just mentioned, people who are listening, if you are in the human resources and you are looking for a company that could come in to help you to run those assessments for your executive leadership or work with the executive leadership to help continue to transition the company into the through the 21st century, then you need to contact Dr. Uh, Terry Jackson from Epiphany so that he can come in and be a support to your organization and help you get to the next level. In addition to that, as a coach, he is also available to assist you as you build 
build your small business. And again, going from a small business to a thriving corporation could be your vision. If that's the case, again, you need to contact uh, our veteran here, Dr. Terry Jackson, so that he can assist you in understanding the things that you need to adjust early on so that you don't have to reverse engineer and spend a whole lot of money trying to figure it out all later. So thank you so much, Dr. Terry. I do appreciate everything that you've um, given us today, and I look forward to having you back. Thank you so very much. It was an honor, and I look forward to having some more, spending some more time with you talking about business. Okay, so before we conclude, where can we find you on the Internet? On the Internet, you can go to my website. That is www.wepiphany, W-E-P-I-P-H-A-N-Y, dot co, not dot com, but dot co, C-O. You can reach me there. You can also reach me on Facebook. Uh, my Facebook page, uh, which is a leadership page, actually, with a, different, a lot of different articles and quotes. Um, you can also call me at 614-301-6918. And my email is terry at wepiphany.co. Perfect. Thank you so much. And all that information you can find below this video. So just scroll down and you'll be able to uh, capture all that information so that you can easily find this gentleman and contact his company to get you moving in the right direction. Thank you so much for your time.